So stepping into the role of a, of a dad, speak to that for a minute, Bishop. Thank you for asking that because that is a big piece of my life in ministry. Probably back in 1994, God began to deal with my heart about connecting with my biological father. I didn't grow up with him. He and my mom got divorced. My wife said, call your dad, call your dad. I said, I'm good, I'm good. Call your dad. And finally I did, and he invited us to go see him outside of Chicago. And to make a long story short, it mended something that I didn't realize was hurting and broken in my heart. When Jesus talked about his anointing, we quote all the time how he was anointed. But he mentioned he was known to heal the broken hearts. He's known for healing bodies and blind eyes and raising the dead, right? But he's anointed to heal broken hearts. That's it. And so in Malachi, the last book of the Old Testament, in the last chapter, in the last verse, God said he would would minister to the the prophet, the man of God, and and turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children Mm. and the hearts of the children back to the fathers, lest there be a curse in the earth. What we're seeing during this pandemic and all the rioting, all the anger and these kids and young people Mm. in trouble is a curse. And only fathers can break it when they begin to come back and reach out to their kids and raise boys to become fathers. Not just Mm. get to go up well in school, become fathers. That means marriage, right? So all that Mm -hmm. is part of the process. If we're not encouraging even a single parent, like my daughter would have some young ladies in our church. And there was uh, their mom, single parent mom, right? And so I invite them to our at the dinner and lunch with us after church. And you can order what you want. And it was like powerful, but they ride in the car, we're going places and stuff with us. They're seeing how my wife and I interact. Sometimes she's trying to teach me how to drive, right? And I said, you know, you just, I got it. And I kind of bark at her a little bit. And then I realized, <laughs> I'm sorry. So I, I asked for forgiveness yeah. while the kids are in the car. I apologize, apologize to my wife and I asked them to forgive me as well. Because they got to see it modeled. I hold my wife's hand. I love her, open the door. So I share that is that fatherlessness is the problem. Amen. Yeah, amen. And you know, the other thing that we need to see modeled is for these kids to understand that the world cares about them. Yes. We care about them. And so I would just like to take this next minute to open up um, and appeal to our audience. I'm asking you, And I don't do this often, but I'm asking you to consider blessing this organization, this ministry that Bishop Ed Smith has uh, obediently uh, brought to the table. Uh, And I'm asking you to invest in it, to invest in the lives, to care about the things that break the heart of God. Because if we are disconnected from that, there is something wrong. Bishop, in the next 30 seconds, what what would you like to say to our audience? When you support, pray, and give to support NehemiahProjectLA.org, I tell you, you're helping people change their lives and give them hope and an opportunity and even start believing in God again. When you feel abandoned, they pray in their own way. They don't know how to pray. They stop, you know, and they, they, they're they doubting, they're questioning, they're traumatized. So when you help us, we're addressing those needs. We, we understand their trauma and we help them. We don't, uh, we don't uh, get on their case. We don't uh, bully them. We give them time to heal. <laughs>